Okay, uh, hello everybody. Uh, I don't want to spend time, much time. Uh, immediately I start um, my lecture. Uh, so today uh, I want to talk uh, about investment, art investment and art investment in Turkey. Then I have a, uh, another lecture on uh, art demand, taste, taste formation and taste capital. Um, so these are the, um, the issues that I want to talk today. And uh, we will have also uh, our second quiz during our uh, lecture. So I don't want to specify when will be will this quiz uh, start. I will specify um, uh, when the time comes. Okay. So, uh, so this is, uh, you know, the, the, the discussions of cultural economics, it's, it's not new. It was uh, in, in mid sixties, um, all this research started to develop and, you know, art objects, uh, they are always, uh, they always attracted uh, public attention, their sale prices um, uh, were always issued to newspapers and economists are also interested to examine this field because of the investment, due to investment uh, uh, dimension. Now, uh, very quickly, I want to talk about art in the Ottoman Empire. Uh, you know, you know, Ottoman Empire also was interested in architecture, uh, you know, regarding uh, the mosques, caravanserai, and our ceramic tiles were very famous carpets. The silk and wool carpets, uh, Turkish carpets were very famous. The jewelry, gold and silver um, um, jewelry was famous. And also the book arts, calligraphy, miniature, illumination, marbling paper and book binding. These are all um, book arts, um, the, 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 the segments of book arts. Now, uh, they are uh, important in the sense that there, there are auctions related to to these uh, artistic styles. I want to uh, say a few words about uh, Islamic uh, art, the calligraphy. It's an it's an art which uh, which is evolved alongside the religion, and it's the Arabic calligraphy um, which is in, incorporated into some arabesque figures uh, and. Uh, the mosques, mosques and walls are decorated with uh, with these figures, and uh, you know, uh, as you know, as pictures are not allowed in in Islam, calligraphy, the writing was developed on the other sand, uh, side. So the books, uh, the you know, the writing style of the books, or you know, these kind of um, shapes um, and figures using calligraphy was uh, was popular and you know miniature uh, art also important we said miniature uh, was the you know uh, in miniature there's no third dimension there's no perspective miniatures are the eye of god uh, as you know and they were uh, at that time um, that was the art of, of of the time developed in 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 iran and um, also very popular uh, at the Ottoman, Ottoman uh, Empire era. So when you look at uh, Turkish paintings in the sense of uh, Western paintings, uh, what we see is uh, we see uh, we see that Turkish painting history starts in early 1800s, and everything starts with uh, the engineering schools uh, or uh, when it started in 1793. Uh, the courses of uh, painting techniques for military studies, uh, you know, the navigation or naval construction, uh, for naval construction, uh, you know, army needed some painters. So Shekhar Ahmed Pasha and Hoje Ali Riza, they were the first painters um, from these military academies who chose to uh, to to stay in the uh, you know in the in in, in paintings uh, side not in the military paintings. So um, Shekhar Ahmed Pasha went to Paris. He worked there. He, he was accepted to the Salon de Paris uh, exhibition. Uh, 
But again, it is interesting. You know, he was accepted to an exhibition where at that time, and there were lots of artists which were refused to this exhibition. And they were refused because they were not painting the works conforming to the requirements of the art of the time. Uh, and they, they become the famous names, Renoir, Van Gogh, etc. Whereas, uh, you know, Shekhar Ahmed Pasha followed the art of the time. So when we say, you know, uh, it's a pity that uh, Shekhar Ahmed Pasha didn't follow uh, the, the, the route, the same route of uh, Renoir, Cezanne, etc. And they and he stick to the, uh, you know, main uh, mainstream artistic schools, um, you know, which were taught at uh, Paris art schools. At any rate, to uh, to all my uh, my objective is to tell you that even though at that time we had some Turkish painters uh, who went to to Paris to study, they studied, but they 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 couldn't be part of a new art movement. They couldn't be friends with Pissarro, uh, Monet, etc. Uh, Monet, Manet, Renoir, they, they did things which conform to the, uh, you know, uh, art school's uh, styles. Um, so in Turkey, the, the first fine art school opened in 1883. And you know who was the opening, uh, you know, who opened the first fine art school in Turkey? Güzel Sanatlar Akademisi'ni kim kuruyor? Any guess? And I, I observed that uh, uh, Osman Hamdi. Osman Hamdi, bravo. And I observed that we are, um, you know, 49 students and we have only 24 students uh, accepted uh, in, in the lecture. Uh, I'm a bit uh, surprised. And, uh, you know, uh, um, although I don't take attendance, uh, I, I have to tell you that I'm not happy with what is going on with the uh, class participants uh, today. Okay, I continue. Yes, Osman Hamdi um, was the uh, first, uh, the, the person who opened the art school. Then uh, a group of uh, art students again sent to Paris and that was Chalu, Ibrahim Chalu and his friends. Uh, so when we look at from 1580s to 1970s, uh, about 30,000 paintings were, were, were made. So this is not, this is not many, uh, you know, um, compared to what, what was produced in, in Europe at that time. Um, so until 70s, uh, from the beginning, uh, most of these paintings, like about 20,000 of these paintings are held by the state institutions. Uh, so in the government offices, in uh, state banks, state institutions, etc. So um, when we look at the original, uh, the origins of art market, during Ottoman era, there wasn't auction houses, there were uh, auctions which are called public sales in the marketplace. In Turkish, they are called tereke, uh, tereke uh, müzayedeleri. That means if you if someone dies and if there is a, there are lots of furnitures and there was a, you know there there was always someone coming to the house and selling these uh, these furnitures and artworks. In, in, in sort of an auction, and this is called tereke müzayedeleri. Now, only uh, recently with the establishment of Republic of Turkey and modern galleries uh, and the, uh, you know, the first state collections uh, with state bank uh, galleries, we, we, see, um, we see a real uh, movement in the art market. And in modern sense, the first auction houses uh, all appeared in 1980s. Among this, maybe I should mention um, Rafi Portakal's Portakal Auction House because this auction house uh, was existent uh, since the grandfather of uh, Rafi Portakal built his uh, his auction house. But again, that was um, um, the auctions were undertaken 
in uh, you know in, in in a different style in the sense that they were more mostly like uh, public sales auctions um, tereke uh, with tereke hakim hakimleri. So uh, we, we, for Turkish art market, we can say that it's it's a local market. Prices are determined mostly uh, with domestic demand and supply conditions. And in 1990s, we see a new development in uh, in Turkish art market. Uh, can you tell me what happened towards the end of 1990s in Turkey? Any idea what happened? Any idea what happened in 1990s, uh, towards the end of 1990s? And there was a huge banking crisis uh, in, 1990, in 2001, in uh, late 90s. Lots of uh, private banks went to bankruptcies. Okay, so. Uh, no, there is a question here. Uh, so, the uh, economic crisis, 2001 economic crisis, actually uh, was a good thing for, for Turkish uh, art market. Uh, why? Because when the private banks went to bankruptcies, uh, banks, these private banks had some private collections and um, Turkey Mevduat Sigorta Fonu, TMSF. It's known as that. Uh, all of a sudden, they owned. They started to own all these artworks of bankrupted banks. And you know, um, what happens if a company uh, goes to bankruptcy? You have to sell whatever the, this this company has in order to generate money to pay the the debt uh, the debts of these. Um, of these uh, companies. So TMSF did the same thing and uh, wanted to sell the, the artworks of, of these major banks. One of these banks was Imar Bankası of Erol Aksoy. Uh, so Erol Aksoy had many, many paintings and one of these paintings was, what was this painting? Any guess? Now you can open your microphone and talk. Yes, that was uh, the painting of Turtle Trainer of uh, uh, Osman Hamdi. And he bought this painting at a very low price in, in 1990. He, he, he told to, to journalists and he decided to sell all the artworks he had. And then he, he left even Istanbul. He doesn't live in Istanbul, I guess. He went to Bodrum. He lives in Bodrum, somewhere in Bodrum. So the sale of these artworks, uh, yes, yes, the same Erol Aksoy. Uh, so uh, Erol Aksoy had lots of artworks and one of them was Osman, Hamdi, uh, Osman Hamdi's turtle trainer. So TMSF wanted to organize um, an art auction and sell these, uh, sell these, um, these artworks. So one of these artworks was the uh, turtle trainer of Osman Hamdi Bey. Uh, so uh, as I told you, in 2004, November 2004, that means 16 years ago by that time, uh, TMSF uh, organized uh, or asked uh, Artam Auction House or Antique Auction House at that time, the name of the auction house, to organize an auction. Uh, to sell uh, the collection of Erol Aksoy. So this turtle trainer, um, I don't know uh, who who are uh, who among you ha have seen uh, has, has seen this uh, this this work at Para Museum. But during that auction, Para Museum and Is Istanbul Modern Museum entered into a race. Okay, so that means I want it. No, I want uh, uh, the prices went up. So at the end. Pera Museum purchased this painting at $3.5 million at that time. So that was a huge money. If you check the dollar, the, the value of dollar, it was about the dollar Turkish lira was about 1 to 1.1. One Turkish lira was about 1 to 1.1 uh, lira, something like that. It was very, very expensive, the sale. And when we say two, two, two people, you know, uh, fight for something, 
uh, what we call that, uh, the result, and that happened in this, uh, in this auction. Winner's curse, Destina, bravo. Uh, okay, and Doruk asked, uh, what is the price of this work? Mm, good question, Doruk. And this is a homework for you. Uh, last year, an Osman Hamdi painting was sold, uh, purchased by Malaysian uh, Islamic Museum. It was Quran, uh, Quran reading girl, and it was a good price. Check, uh, check the 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 prices of Osman Hamdi's last year's sales. Um, you will see that Osman Hamdi is selling selling uh, at a good uh, good money. So its price um, around it could be again uh, sold for about. Uh, five million dollars easily five to six million dollars this painting but uh, I don't think that any Turkish collector is ready to pay this money in Turkey for this painting because of uh, you know the depreciation of Turkish lira and you know the financial troubles of, um, of most of the companies Yes, uh, so that was the price. Thank you, Kutlu. 6.3 million pounds was the price of Quran uh, Reading Girl, which was sold last year to Malaysian Islamic uh, Museum. So uh, I can tell you that Osman Hamdi's paintings, uh, the style is Orientalist style. Uh, Orientalist style paintings are um, paintings. Um, there is one person who's very one painter uh, who's very much famous for orientalist paintings the one that i know and i'm sure many of you you know uh, you know bathing uh, ang he, he had uh, he had paintings uh, if you if you see a, a woman uh, you see the back of a woman in 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 a hammam uh, type of paintings belong to Ang. So that was, uh, you know, Orientalist paintings were, were popular in late uh, 19th century. It there was a, you know, the fashion that was, you know, Ottoman Empire was a fashion. You know, people um, in Europe uh, were trying to, you know, wear clothes uh, like Ottoman Empire and trying to guess what is going on in the harem you know, all this animation, dancing girls, etc. That was an imaginative world. This was not reality. However, Western people uh, dreamed an idealized world and all the paintings related to this world are um, defined as Orientalist words. At any rate, Osman Hamdi's paintings uh, belong to this uh, school of uh, art. Uh, so what was uh, what was uh, the, the topic? Okay, so uh, once Osman Hamdi's painting was sold, um, that created a you know newspaper event. All the journals, televisions were talking about that. Why? Because it was you know for so far no one purchased paid such a big amount of money for a painting in Turkey. So that created. A uh, huge uh, news, but imagine, uh, you know, you you shut a TV commercial. Uh, again, you need to spend that much money to make a commercial, and so purchasing this artwork was like an announcement of this new museum, Para Museum, to the, to whole Turkey and to the world and telling them that we are opening a new museum and this work will be in this museum and we are, you are very welcome to see this artwork in our museum. So I think it was a good, uh, good uh, initiative from the part of uh, the, the museum, of, oh, sorry, from the part of, uh, yeah, from the part of Para Museum to, to purchase this work. I think there's a question. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, again, why uh, Orientalist paintings are popular? Maybe the rise of conservative movements in the world. Um, you know, uh, 
the purchasing power of uh, Islamic collectors maybe uh, has increased in the in the, uh, in the in the in the recent future. 